everyone, it's me, Melinda. Uh, today we're going to be looking at kyanite, and I'm very much looking forward to it. I have a, you know, a nice little collection going here, um, and many other uh, similar pieces, um, because this is very much something that we can collect here in Ontario. Um, when it comes to my tours, this one would be the uh, Sudbury tour, and what we find there is beautiful uh, clear blue kyanite however uh, it's often a part of this like mica quartz schist uh, and is accompanied by garnets but we'll get into that a little bit later first i'm going to start with uh, the regular old blue kyanite that we are used to seeing in stores very very typical <clears throat> Um, so kyanite is typically, like I said, a blue <clears throat> aluminosilicate mineral, usually found in aluminum-rich uh, metamorphic pegmatites, or um, as well as sedimentary rock. Um, kyanite in metamorphic rocks generally indicates pressure higher than 4 kilobars. Uh, it is commonly found in quartz. And like I said, a lot of what we're going to be seeing today is accompanied with quartz. There we go. Isn't that just gorgeous? Beautiful. Some really nice deeper blue saturation in there. Gorgeous. Um, so kyanite is also known as dysthene. Uh, Raetocite and cyanite. Uh, it is found in the schists and gneisses of regionally metamorphosed areas and less often in quartzites and eclogites. And like I said, today we're going to be looking at some typical schists. Um, <clears throat> kyanite is often associated with other metamorphic minerals such as garnet, like I said, as well as storolite and corundum. And, uh, Actually, ruby is the mineral corundum. Uh, if you go back to my previous video on corundum, uh, where I talk about ruby particularly, you'll hear me discuss um, rings of kyanite, um, and also today you'll see a ruby with kyanite uh, tumbled stone. So certainly those two uh, can occur together. However, what we find in Sudbury is not ruby, it's... Almondine garnets or almondine. So the name kyanite comes from the same origin as that of the color cayenne or cyan, um, being derived from the ancient Greek word kyanos, which means dark blue. So it's a reflection of its usual color. And there are other colors of kyanite, but blue is certainly uh, the most common and typical one. So kyanite is used primarily in refractory and cer ceramic products, uh, including porcelain, plumbing, and dishware. Um, it is also used in electronics, electrical uh, insulators, and abrasives. Kyanite has been used as a uh, semi-precious gemstone, uh, which may display cat's eye chatoyancy when it's um, nicely shaped and polished. <clears throat> One of my very, very favorite things is black kyanite. This one over here from Brazil. It is affectionately nicknamed Witch's Broom, and you can definitely see why. This is a very typical type of formation for the black kyanite. Um, and I mean, come on! It's the perfect nickname. It looks so much like a Witch's Broom, and I, uh, you know, I get that some people are not into the whimsical side of things, but um, as much as I, you know, I super enjoy the geology part. It's certainly, you know, like my favorite part of minerals. I, I'm a bit of a whimsical gal, so I do like the nicknames and things as well. <laughs> it 
And you're allowed to roll your eyes if you feel so inclined. But I love the nickname Witch's Broom for this one. <laughs> it's just just makes sense. Look at it. <laughs> um, so black kyanite uh, is a highly debated stone. Um, many mineral enthusiasts have argued that kyanite is more typically blue. Um, and although it does appear in green and orange, they feel that black is highly unlikely. Um, many argued that it must be a type of black amphibole, and because of this, it was actually uh, erroneously sold and marketed as a rare type of amphibole uh, when it was first brought to the market. However, those with more experience and knowledge have made it uh, clear on, you know, geology forums, uh, as well as the uh, website Mindat or Mindat, depending on how you like to pronounce it, um, <clears throat> that these specific specimens from Ribeiro dos Folhas, sorry, I'm totally butchering that, my apologies, um, in Minas Gerais, Brazil, are without a doubt kyanite. Um, some of the geologists that speak on the matter have tested the material and have discovered that the black color is due to graphite being mixed into the stone's chemistry, and that is totally amazing. So that's what gives it this, um, darker color, having, uh, graphite in its, you know, chemical makeup. Totally cool. That blows my mind. I love it. <laughs> ah, I love discovering things like that. So I super loved my piece before, and now I love it even more knowing that there's some graphite included in there. Super neat. Alright, um, now we'll start looking at the type of stuff that we can collect on my Sudbury tour. Um, it comes from Wanapte, Ontario, um, and it's known as Blue Kyanite in Black Biotite Nice. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> sometimes it is seen with red almondine garnets, although, uh, you'll see, uh, what I'll show you first are those that are lacking the garnets. There we go. So you can see the black biotite mica flashing around. You can see areas of quartz, um, but it's these clear blue uh, blades that are the kyanite. See one sticking out here. If you follow my thumb, I'll point some out, but they're very much mashed in with the quartz and the biotite mica. Still utterly gorgeous. There we go. Can you see the blue blades sticking out there? There's one over here more here and then more throughout and it is a nice or, or a schist so you will see little tiny things sprinkling around it's just a little bit of quartz or mica it's no big deal you see it in my palm <laughs> Oh, cool. There we go. You can see some blue pieces throughout. Big garnet in there. <laughs> I did not know that garnet was there. Look at that, eh? All right. And again, those are almondine garnets. You can see blue kyanite blade just sticking into it there. They're really nice crystal clear blue.
seems to be what you want to do. A lot of quartz back here. A nice blade of carnate there. Cool. And these ones are from the same location, but they have garnets in them. I didn't realize that. Other one had a nice big garnet in it, but these ones certainly do. Come on. So you can see these blue blades of carnite throughout. And then the red circular gems are almondine garnets. Too cool. And again, <clears throat> the black flakes are biotite mica, and the white clearish just stone that you're seeing is quartz. My gosh, they're so beautiful all together. I love it. Um, so this particular occurrence was discovered in 1890 by A.P. Barlow while mapping the area for the Geological Survey of Canada. Uh, in 1952, uh, the Hoyle Mining Company staked the deposit for kyanite, which was to be used for the protection of mullet uh, used in porcelain. Uh, its subsidiary, Northern Kyanite Mines Limited, explored the deposit by diamond drilling and trenches in 1953. So, it's a historical location that we are very fortunate to get to collect from nowadays. <laughs> Bigger piece. Isn't that just gorgeous? If we can get up closer. There we go. Beautiful garnets, beautiful blue blades of kyanite. sticking out there. I love the combination. It's so pretty. So gorgeous. All right, and lastly, the most controversial one <laughs> that has, you know, really hit the market uh, recently, uh, Ruby and Kyanite together in a tumbled stone. And these are becoming more and more popular at, uh, you know, little gem shops or metaphysical shops. Um, and a lot of folks in the mineral world were really convinced they were fake. Uh, when they first hit the market, there was a lot of debate about it um, and a lot of discussion, which eventually led people to accept that they're uh, possibly uncommon worldwide, but not certainly not rare. Um, <clears throat> someone mentioned that uh, they have specimens from a fellow mineral lover in Western North Carolina in the U.S., uh, and he hounds a metamorphic outcrop in his area that contains pink to red or blue corundum with kyanite laths in an emery ground mass. Um, so certainly it exists, or he believes it exists in that uh, location. I myself checked on Mindad or Mindat uh, for kyanite locations, and there were many known kyanite locations in ruby mines around the world. Um, including in Greece, Nepal, Norway, and in the USA. So I definitely don't think it's, you know, an impossible thing. It doesn't seem like it uh, requires faking. Um, a little bit more uh, interesting conversation. 
Uh, <laughs> someone named Andy Stuckey, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, Stuckey, Stuckey, explained on MindUp Forum that uh, actually kyanite is not uncommon as rims around ruby sapphire in the metamorphic rocks. Um, this is what he said. He said that's because ruby and sapphire only occur in silica undersaturated rocks, and if, for some reason, silica-rich fluids enter the rock, ruby and sapphire is replaced by minerals that are chemically similar but contain silica. Uh, so he says, more simply put, ruby plus more silica equals kyanite. Uh, that's the way he put it. I'm not sure uh, <laughs> if you would agree. You're certainly welcome to let me know. Um, but yeah, if you're looking at kyanite rims around ruby, uh, he claims that that means the ruby has been partially replaced by kyanite because of that above process. Um, and if that is the true geological process, that is utterly, utterly fascinating and certainly makes uh, a tumblestone like this, uh, you know, a possibility, a reality. Um, so yeah, this one, I, I choose to believe in it. It's certainly... Uh, feels like my other ruby specimens, although I know some folks find that silly. <laughs> but I definitely get feels from my rocks. Um, but yeah, what's your opinion on the matter? What do you think of these tumbled stones that have uh, recently become quite popular? Do you uh, believe that they're uh, genuine? Uh, it, it is what Andy Stuckey or Andy Stuckey said uh, the the facts, the true facts around how uh, Ruby can, you know, change into kyanite. I would love to know what you think. Um, yeah. So there is my gorgeous kyanite collection. I hope everyone found that as interesting as I did. <laughs> um, and thanks again for stopping by, guys. It really means a lot to me that you're enjoying my videos. See you next time.